Worst. Motherfucker never loved us. Fucker never loved us. You ain't know. All right, we back on the Unstable <laughs> Podcast, making it happen one more week. Mike Hill hanging out with the crew. Got Tory down there in the place to be. Key Tory in the place to be. Got kicked out of Trump University. What up? Yes, what's up? What's up? I got to bring in my girl, Claudia Jordan, the beautiful, the very talented Claudia Jordan in the house as always, looking always, good with the makeup. Always. She brought the wine as always. always. And, uh, and uh, Steve Wilson right here. What the dealio, y'all? What the dealio? Back home, we'll talk about that in just a second. Yes. And then uh, my man... A comic legend, yeah. one of the funniest yes. guys on the face of this planet. When you talk about unfiltered, this what? man is the epitome yes. of unfiltered. Yes. Corey Holcomb in the house. Yes. Hey. What's up, ladies? It's your fault you a single mom not excelling. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to get that all night right here. Thanks for hanging out with us, Corey. We're back in the studio. We're out of the Dash studio. Had a little bit of a mix-up, miscommunication problem. No disrespect to Dash, but we're back because Steve is back home because uh, this is uh, D.L. Hughley's old studio, right? Yeah, I, so I work brings, in this studio no, for three and, and a half. Oh, the ghost of paychecks wait, passed. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, wait, wait. wait, wait. It's D.L. Hughley's current studio. Oh, Steve's yeah, yeah, old studio. Yeah, that's right, right, right. Yeah, that's yeah, right. His current studio. His current studio. studio. Yeah. That's his seat, too, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, sitting in the seat. Yeah. Are you <laughs> farting in it? I think I fart five times in this chair. Are you having a little post-traumatic stress? I'm going to leave a Hershey in this chair. Oh, my God. How do you feel good, like huh? being in the studio of where it all went down when you were you, were you know, abused? I, to be honest, I don't even care no more. When I tell you when you move past it, I was angry in the beginning, but you know you move past it. I don't, you sure, Steve? I'm one thousand percent sure. <clears throat> on God, I wish him the best. Okay, let, let, oh, let wow. me, I, have, I like that. I have yeah. a question yeah. for you. If we could get D.L. Hewley to come to the show, would I you would, be okay? Listen, let me yeah, listen. God damn it. Okay, sorry, sorry. <laughs> would you be okay if we have like a kind of a squash the beef? Come to Jesus, kind of like you know, y'all can get shit off your chest. Yes, you but I'm gonna be 100 percent honest, and then he's not gonna want to do it. Well, but, but that's, that's a, for Bob all, Sumner too. Bring him on up, him or Dio Hughley on the show. That's and I'm all. Be that's, honest. that's all I want. So you wouldn't be mad if no. uh, yeah, beef with Bob too. Nigga, what? But wait, if we I don't fuck with clown niggas, so if I we don't. if we Come set on, Bob it up, Bob Sumner, man, go ahead, Claudia. Go ahead, Claudia. Go ahead, Claudia. If we set it up and don't tell you in advance, and it happens. You won't be mad at us, right? No, I okay. love y'all. Listen, if they walk Listen. up and just know the truth, gonna go down. We want. Yeah, to, hey, okay. D- that's D- all D- I want to know. Dio gonna walk in like catch a predator. Right, right. <laughs> Chris Hansen. Can I, ask you, can I ask you a question? Go ahead, fam. Did, did Dio put you on this show and he got you some money? Yeah. Well, whatever happened, let it ride, Joe. That's what I'm saying. I'm done. Listen, listen, listen. Just he got he, you some cheese. Look, I got a, a lot of cheese. I, 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 you, know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes cheese. it go bad. Just don't listen, dwell on listen, it. Listen, that's why I said I'm done. In the beginning, I was upset because he did some bitch shit, but I'm done. You had to let it go. Corey, I've been telling him. I've been telling you, Steve, for a that's long his time. Cousin. That's my cousin. It's All right, cousin. so that's my family, right? Who's your cousin? D.L. Hughley's my cousin. So that's my oh, cousin. Yeah. It's my family. Yeah. And I told you, I saw him a couple of weeks ago, and he said that he's proud of you, that he's happy for you, that he actually likes the podcast, and he's even thinking about sponsoring the podcast. But you know what? And to receive a... blessings in the future, you got to let go of some of the things that you've gone through in the past, man. That's so, why I said I will listen. Just know that the truth is gonna come out. We can come on the show. The, but, I'll do but, it. What truth? I mean, everybody's got skeletons, man. Why does the truth have to come out? Just go to the future and let it go. Because I'm let a you... different dude now, and I'm not letting, letting clown niggas relax. Well, don't worry. Uh, about you're not it. over yet, you, you, Steve. You, as long as he ain't grabbed by the balls at a party, man, then you should be all right. <laughs> That's pretty, pretty much what's happening is that these what days. Happened? This no, better not be no. over no girl. And yeah, that shit would have been on the news, nigga. Okay. Yeah. over no girl. Is. No, hell no. no I, I think we all that. have issues with someone that we've worked with. Yes. Everybody. Everybody on the show. Yes. And, I, and I will say it myself. I will go on the record. And if there's anybody that you want to get and have a squash, I'm cool with talking to anyone. Okay. Except Omarosa. Uh, Omarosa, Ricky Smiley. Uh, uh, I'm cool with that. My, my I, I wanted to sit down with I ain't squashing shit. Ricky Smiley, didn't Ricky Smiley bring you on his show? He didn't. I'm so and you gra- made some money? I'm very grateful for that. Very That's what grateful. I'm saying. It's, like, it's a lot of people right. where it went wrong with me and them, but then I think about it. Okay, yeah. you brought me on, though. Yep. So I'm not finna hold it. I'm not finna yeah. hold it. Hey, I'm going to tell you this. I'll say this right here on live so y'all hear it. I'm thankful for all of the money he gave me. There you go. But fuck all the bullshit. Yeah, thank Everybody's- you for the money, but the bitch shit you did, you ride And, that. Corey, I think if we're being real, I think you are a guy with a lot of pride as well. So I feel like, you know, if someone, you got money with someone, that's not enough to, like, negate everything they did fucked up to you, right? Of course not, but what I'm saying is you got to put it all in perspective. For sure. Is what happened worth you holding on to I it put forever? It to you like this. Especially with somebody that found a way to hit you with licks in this entertainment business. That's true. Because it's not easy to come by. No, it's you not. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Especially if you eat for years with a person. You got to be like, man, I ate with you, man. I ain't going to keep I ain't gonna keep it up. I don't like what you did, but I ain't going to keep it up. 
So I gotta be, I gotta get, I gotta give uh, Rob Snyder a pass for being a dick on the animal when he said that shit. <laughs> right, Little right, bitty right, bastard. Right. Hey, here right. we go. Why don't we do this? Why don't we go around the room? Somebody that you had beef with in the past in the industry. Why don't you go ahead and just get it off your chest right now and let it go for good? Let's go <laughs> okay. ahead and bury it. Go ahead. Let's go ahead. Well, well, excluding family. Excluding, <laughs> <laughs> excluding Joe. And we won't bring it up ever again. Rob Snyder, man, was just a dick, man, when I shot the animal, man. And I, and he didn't put me on that movie, really. Adam Sandler did, to be honest. So, you know, I ain't squashing that beef. Fuck that. <laughs> oh, God. Wow. Oh, Merry Christmas. Right. Okay, that went left. Corey, you got anybody? Hey, when I was on Last Comic Stand and that dude, Jay Moore, was like, he had a real ego problem. Uh, but, you know, he ain't. I ain't getting no money with him. I got it myself. But I was just saying, that was one of the worst experiences I ever had. We're working with somebody, but I ain't mad at you. It's just I know how to get the fuck away from you. Right, you got to move on. And I agree with that because <laughs> yeah. I did Last Comic Standing, too. And what it, what it is is, like, a lot of those comics who were judges and stuff in there are jealous of black comics. So we we put more ass in the seats than, than any of them. So cats like Andy Kendler and and, and uh, a bunch of the other cats who was on that show at that time, man. So, yeah. yeah. Fuck, okay. yeah, I ain't squashing that beef either. Fuck it. All right, Steve, Steve? you want to squash it? <laughs> Listen, I, was, I told you I squashed it. I wish him the best. So with DL and with uh, Bob Sumner? Both of them. Listen, I'm going to tell you this right now. Bob Sumner, you owe me $700. It might not sound like a lot of money to you, but you walked me for it, and oh, I don't, I don't but, but, respect the okay, man Steve, that walk away. But, Steve, Steve, you got to tell the story about what happened well, with Bob Sumner. Before that, Steve, okay. are you mad because you, you don't do Def Jam? Is that what it is? Oh. You damn right. <laughs> oh. I want to be a star. No, mm-hmm. no, no. Fuck a Def Jam. Right, exactly, right. <laughs> no, no, I love Def Jam. I ain't going to front. That, that, that started my career, man. I got love for Def Jam. I ain't going to lie. He ain't okay. do shit for me. I'll okay. tell you this. I moved to New York, and we was doing a show, and... We was going to do a comedy show together. So I'm trusting Bob because I know this dude. So at the end of the night, you're going to get my money. I'm going out because you was there. It was my birthday when you did the roast at right. Caroline's. Right. So we leave, and I'm thinking this dude got my money. I only got 700 for the rest. I'm supposed to get 15 so he's supposed to give me 800 But something happened. I got the other 100 And then he said, oh, uh, Caroline's got your money. And I was like, what? So we saw him at the New York Comedy Festival. <laughs> I see him and Lou from Caroline's. I said, well, we can squash it right now. He's a bet. Swear to God, on the Holy Bible, you know black people can't say this because we scared of God. We started walking, he dipped off in the crowd. Earth, earthquake was like, God damn. Everybody saw it. No respect for the brother. $700? Come on. $700, he rolled out on you, man. But you know what? You can have that money, and I'm cool with that. Hey, man, you're making a lot of money now, bro. You good. Don't worry about that. Claudia, who you got? Uh, mine will be Ricky Smiley. Mm-hmm. And here's my thing. Um, I Ricky Smiley met me on the, cat, on the show, um, The Foxhole. And he came to the show, and he was really complimentary. Like, he loved how raw I was on the show. So years later, when there was an opportunity, he offered, he wanted to get me on a show. He was, like, beefing with Ebony Steel. So he actually pushed that through. And I am 1,000% grateful. I thought this could be, like, such a huge opportunity because it's a syndicated radio show. I did the Foxhole where we was getting pennies. I was. And we had millions of listeners. Like, that show was. Everybody was like, at the Foxhole. We, we, mm-hmm. built that, we built that from day one, right? We built that channel. So... I was so excited to be in a new city and, you know, to have a really a, a black audience. And that's what I really want the love of the most. So after two weeks on the show, like, I was kind of, like, doing my thing. I was being funny and edgy like you know, Foxhole Claudia. And then I was told, um, you don't have to always try to be funny. Then it was don't talk during sport. Then it was like I, I got diminished. And then I became, I listened to him because he's the one that brought me on. So I, I kind of regret it because, like, I did a year of just kind of just calling it, calling it in. To appease him because he didn't like a he don't like a woman to be like too much. Mm-hmm. But you got me because of that. So I feel like I was I compromised my talent. I, I downplayed it and I would read the comments where she's whack, she's boring, and I'm like, I agree. I, I feel like I am. And I wish he would just like let it rock and let me shine for let me do what I'm good at. Did not come from that and cloth. he didn't, and then it just became where imagine going to a job where you're like operating at 15 percent and and you're getting criticized on that 15 percent and you agree with the critics so, so i wish i would have been able to really be me but i do listen i made good money in that year yes and i it made me i was on a, a daytime syndicated radio show that was national what would you want to ask me? so you became steve wilson <laughs> <laughs> kind of and, and you know what's sad mm-hmm. like i feel like he's mad at me because he thinks i'm you. mad at him for letting me go and i'm not because like five months before they didn't renew my contract. I wrote my resignation letter, and I showed it to Special K, and he was like, "Sounds I, like Steve Wilson." He's like, no, I, I quit on air. Okay, let me let me do this for you guys because I I, okay. I feel like I never really had a chance to thoroughly explain it, mm-hmm. right. and I feel like I miss again understood, and I don't want people to think I'm ungrateful because I am. That was a dope ass job. It could have been amazing if I could have just been me. Right. 
And I feel like, you know, I think he's mad at me because he thinks I'm, I feel some way, type of way about being, um, not having my contract renewed, which I was actually, I was relieved. If I can't do it 100%, then I, I'm, I'm, like, I'm a fraud, right? Like, I'm not really being me. I'm being like, you why, with- why did you wait for the contract to get relieved? If you, the reason I say that is because it's like this. No, I, he, I wrote a letter to, to, to resign. Is that me? Oh. No, we got an Amber alert. Hold on. Oh. I wrote my resignation letter, and then I talked to someone else in the biz, and they said, do not quit. Finish your year out because it makes you look better as a talent. I said, did you think that's better than me walking away? So I didn't know. But what you was- understand, sister, that's still <clears throat> on you. In, these, in the entertainment industry, if you're in a situation that you feel is going to take away from what you need or want the public to see, yeah. you have to have the courage to walk away from it because I done been in situations where they come with the little predictable, oh, in this episode you wear a dress. Right. And I'm like, too. Yeah. I'm like, yo, hey, let me tell you something, homie. I'm not finna put the dress on. Now, if I if this is my last day, this is my last right. day. Right. <laughs> but I'm not finna do it. So what I'm trying to say to you, because you know I know Ricky too. I know. And I'm saying like And you came into the show when I was yeah, there. Yeah, I did the show. But look, this is what I'm saying. If it ain't working, don't let it turn toxic. Because if you are around people and it's not working, I don't care if it's for job, church, whatever, you probably should get away from them. People. But what if they turn toxic human beings, first? It, well, but that's opinional. But the fact is, you're not happy. Yeah. I, I do, I do regret. So let's bounce. That's why I, I, go back. I do regret Boy, how bloody. I do regret how it went down because I feel like I was cool on my, when I got the call that I wasn't getting my contract renewed, and I thought I really want you to know that no matter, I'm not mad about that. We could still be cool, but I feel like he felt kind of guilty about it because, like, right before that happened, he hit me with the super nice. You know what I mean? And I feel like he thinks I was mad, so he. He did the preemptive strike and then started like kind of slandering me at work. They started making up rumors that I was messing with Special K and all kind of stuff. So then it became really ugly. And I just wish Ricky Smiley, if you're listening to this or any of your fans, I'm not mad about not having my contract renewed. I'm very grateful for the opportunity. It was a dope ass opportunity. It just didn't work out. Like your human, my human, it just didn't work out. That doesn't. You know that that doesn't make. Still going, right? Yeah, I know it is. And it was going before you got there. That's what I'm, I'm saying. Not, I'm not trying to take up for nobody. I'm just letting you know. Man, this is this this business keep moving, man. The, the, right. the and, feelings and, sometimes, and stuff, it don't mean nothing. But sometimes I would never work with Stephen A. Smith, because I already know. You know. If I was in a room <laughs> with him, I'd get mad. I'd be like, You sit here, you you scared to say that about Caucasian people. You used to say <laughs> shit about women, but they suspended your ass. <laughs> so now you don't say nothing about women. You know what I'm saying? Right. I know that's what I'm gonna say one day and deal with the consequences that come with it. So me trying to be something like a little peacemaker right here, mm-hmm. but keeping it real. Man, Claudia, if, that, if it wasn't working out for you, I'm talking about in the future, leave before it turns toxic. Because mm-hmm. I, mean, I, I hate to see people I know not getting along because you'd be like, damn, what the fuck I would do? Right. You know but, what what I'm, but I want him to know this. Like, I even put it out there that I I am about the squashing of the beef. Like, it doesn't have to be. I think he thinks I'm mad, so he's, you know when someone's like, they kind of feel a little guilty about something, so they'll kind of flip it. And I don't, I don't, I don't have any feelings about that. I'm cool on it. I was, I'm okay with it. Basically, my point is, appreciate the opportunity. I think there's a misunderstanding. If you ever want to sit down and talk about it, I will. I don't want to job with you again. Ricky gave a lot of people ha- opportunities. He did. Dog. Claudia, did, have he you did. ever reached out to that. him? Absolutely. Uh, yeah, Absolutely. I sent him. I, I, I'm a communicator. I like to talk things out, uh-huh. obviously. Like, She's I don't, better than me. I will send you. I, <laughs> I'll send an email. I'll, I'll try to reach cool. out. Steve, let, let's I'll send it. an email. And it's, if, you do, if you're not receptive to that, you're not receptive to it. But I feel like... You can fire someone from a show and still be cool with them afterwards. Right, like it ain't it's a business. Th- I've had many jobs in this business. I've been around twenty years, so every job mm-hmm. to me is not a career. Everything it's, the next, it's the next. It's, step, you know, Ebony right. was like the Ed McMahon, though. You get what I mean? Ebony was <laughs> Ebony was like she used to laugh with Ricky and all that stuff. So it worked. Whatever they fell out about, that's just how the game go. It's still yeah. his show. You know yeah, what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, for sure, it's his show. But she was that perfect complement to what he does. <laughs> and then. And then it, whatever happened, it didn't work. But it opened up a door for you, right? It did. And it did. Man, I did that. I did my year. And then and you got when you was in Atlanta, it opened up other doors. Yeah. Because I was legitimately moving to Atlanta for a real job, I got Atlanta Housewives. Could it was a path? No, my when year. I told you in the hallway. I knew them bitches weren't gonna like you. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I used to be. Bad, them, them, them bitches look horrible. I, 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 I used to be cool with Portia, and we hung out a few times before the show. So when I got to the first day of the, the radio show, she Portia was Portia cute though. So I yeah, she's cute. you know. So we were talking. <laughs> no, some of them other ones though, you be like. So we were oh, talking, right? Shit. And she was like, we were like, yo, we got a hang. Congratulations. I was like, yo, you doing your thing. The next day, I had to shoot a scene with Kenya, and after that, it was like. 
on site. She hated me after that just for shooting a scene with someone she hated. I like that's a show where it's like, like they don't like you if you're cool <laughs> with one of their friends. And it's like I didn't. I'm not. I don't hang with people like that. Like. Just because you hate someone, I'm not gonna like not be cool with you because you hate him. I won't let him talk about you around him. But you know what I'm saying? Like it was a lot of that. I'll give y'all a quick story about how women are. My niece is three years old, <laughs> and every time she see me, she always used to be Uncle Corey and jump over here. Uh. Then one day I came in there with my girl, and you know my girl is cute, and <laughs> my niece was just like this. <laughs> jealous. She didn't say jealous. nothing to me. She was looking at me like, "Who is this? <laughs> it's so genuine. This is wow. how women are when they're around each other. Yeah. Born that way. Born that way. We got the great Corey Holcomb in the house. Mike Hill, yeah. guy Tory. Who's your, who's your person? Oh yeah. Don't 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 try no, no, to skate no, no, around. You know this. We'll come back. We'll come back. We'll come back and get Mike's person. He can't say nothing. He's still employed. No, I'm still in. No, no, it's still in. Come back and get Mike's person. Uh, yeah, we'll get back to that in just a second. We're gonna take a little break. We're also gonna do. Uh, nah, y'all are whack for that. Uh, no, we'll do that. More of the sexual harassment claims that are out there right now. And really, if a woman claims that she's been sexually harassed but she's lying, what should be the consequences for her? We'll talk about that coming up next right here on the Unstable Podcast. <laughs> right, right, let we it go. We are back on the Unstable <laughs> right. Podcast. Very loudly debate going on. Very loudly. Break. Very loudly. It's on my Instagram live. Yes, if, yes. Everybody yeah. saw it on Instagram Everybody. live. It'll Mike Hill, Claudia, be. Jordan, Steve Wilson. Corey Holcomb's in the house with us. And, of course, Guy Tori. We're talking about forgiveness, y'all. We're talking about letting the past go and, and moving on in the future and accepting your blessings. And uh, Guy's already – well, he ain't forgiving anybody. Corey said he has nobody to forgive. Steve said he forgives my cousin. Just never Hebrew. forget. Never forget. Right, you I gotta, forgave. I sometimes you got to let that go as well. No, that's a, and Claudia that's a, was talking about Ricky smiling, how she's let that go, but she just wishes that you guys could communicate and let just him know. Just don't slander me. Like, that, yeah, you don't have any hard feelings. I, so I, do you I'm believe so, that he's slandering your name? Though? He did. People from the studio will call me. They're like, yo, he's over here like throwing tantrums saying that you slept with someone on the show. Like, when the, and I'm like, listen, just keep, stick to the issues. But what it, you doing right now is still keeping it up. Because he's asking me a question. Mm. Okay, well, I got to answer, right? right. Yeah. And it's like I never get to answer because I'm always trying to take the high road. So then when you always take the high road, other people control the narrative. So my thing is this. It doesn't have to work out. Every job isn't meant to be. And it's like it, it was feeling, It was like putting a square peg in a round hole. It didn't work out. That's fine. I'm not mad at that. Right. But let me leave with my dignity. Don't let me, like, don't slander me and say I did things I didn't do. You can say whatever I really did. If I was fucked up, I was late all the time, or if I was horrible, you can say that. But don't lie and say I was with someone I wasn't with. You know right, what I'm saying? So right. I, I, regardless, I'm still over it. I had many people lie to me before. It, it's fine. I'll, I work before the lies. I'll work after. Ricky, we cool. I'm going to send you um, a purse for my line, and we all good. A purse? Just so I know you know that. Send some of that peach wine. Send some of that peach wine. Go ahead, guys. Now, if he had said, if he'd said you were late all the time, I'd have believed that. Of course. <laughs> I, yeah. was, I was late a lot. I was Listen, late a lot. for a morning show, she probably got there at 620. Right. First of all. Exactly. <laughs> you know I what? made I, my segment. I do believe there is a reason, a season, and a lifetime. And there are people that's going to be in your life for a reason. You can't make them a season. You can't make a season into a lifetime. But those people come into your life for a reason. And it leads to bigger and better things. So sure. you, you did your time, led to other stuff. You're here now, and bigger things are yet to come. But I also believe that, you know, I, even though I'm crazy, I believe in God and I believe in spiritual. Ah! Oh, sorry. I believe in spiritual sorry. spirituality, <laughs> and funny. I know that you know what. Even though you forgive somebody, you gotta let things go. When you let For it sure. go, when you let it go and let God, things are gonna happen. And I don't want to make this like a religious show or anything like mm. that. But when you fully let go yes. and you've forgiven that person and you've moved on, then you can receive the other blessings that are gonna Absolutely. come your way. But when you hold on to that bitterness and that animosity, you can't receive the other blessings. And that leads me to what mm -hmm. I went through because I was, and, and it's not a big name or anything like that, but when I was in the local market, you probably know who the guy is. His name is Dale Hansen. A guy's in Dallas. You probably see oh, his yeah. his viral videos that go on. Yeah, he does these commentaries in Dallas or whatever. I worked for him for eight months when I was there. I had just uh, left New York, went down there, moved my family, and ten months in, I'm having issues with him because, you know, my sportscasting style is a little bit different. I'm black. I'm I'm, I'm unapologetic, unapologetically black, if I can say the word right. Can't so, say the word. Though. Unapologetically mm -hmm. black. Right. That's why black. he didn't like you. Exactly. So, but the thing is, so I apologize for butchering that word. I, I'm I'm on the air and I'm doing my thing and I'm being, you know, myself. And people in Dallas are loving that. But Dale has been there for 20 years. Now I'm the first black sportscaster that he had ever hired mm -hmm. in 20 years mm -hmm. being there. So at one point, he calls me into his office and he asked me if I want to be a sportscaster or if I want to be a black sportscaster. I don't know the difference. Uh, yeah. Shit. And I'm like, well, I, th I happen to be a sportscaster who happens to be black, but I don't know what you mean. So he's trying to get me to conform to being somebody that I'm not. I said, you saw the tape. You saw what my resume is. This is who I am. 
And then he goes on and he tells me things like, you know what, I'm a changed man. I know a lot of people in this town think I'm racist. You know, I grew up in Iowa, and, yeah, I was in the military, and, yes, I used to use the N-word back in the day. But Damn. I changed. Yeah, he, he, this, these are these are two oh conversations. Okay. I use the N-word, and, 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 yes, but I've changed now because uh, my daughter, uh, he, she, uh, she has a baby. You know, she, has a, she has a baby by a black man. So <laughs> I, I did black... that to you, yeah, sir. Right. Yeah, so my I, daughter, I, she got a nigga baby. Yeah, How so can I, I be racist? It's pretty right much it. That brown wood. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> then he says something like, you know what, and I got a, my, one of my best friends, he's black, he's a judge, you know what I mean? So all those type of things that he said to me. And then eventually things came to a head, and I got let go by him. And, of course, I'm bitter because I'm thinking I'm doing a great job. I was in New York. I was already being written up in national magazines. This is before ESPN. And I'm upset, so I'm pissed. I'm bitter. I'm trying to get jobs, and he's slandering my name. He's killing my name mm. in the industry. I went to Tampa. That's how shit. Did an interview. Uh, the news director said, as long as I find out you're not a, a mass murderer, you got this job. Come to find out two weeks later, I don't get a call from the people in Tampa. And I find out the reason why is because he called the station or somebody from the station called the station and said I was a bad person or whatever. So they didn't give me that job. Now you're messing with my family. You sound like you holding on to this deal. No, no, that was back then. No, that was back then. You believe me? You believe but, but I'm, I'm telling let me finish the story, though. So I'm, I'm getting in my car. I'm about to go hood on this nigga. I'm about to really, I'm about to go, I'm about to really fuck him up. Seriously. Um, this is a true story. I get in my car, I'm driving down the tollway, and something told me, let it go. And that was God. When God told me to let it go, I finally let it go. I turned it around. Three months later, do you realize I got a job at the competing station across the street, Channel 5, and then eight months later, if I would have gotten a job at Tampa, I would have never been at ESPN. That's true. Eight months later, I get a job at ESPN, and the rest is history. So wow. when you let it go, when you finally let it go, and you can receive those, those other blessings, mm -hmm. You can get those things, but you've got to let it go. You can't just say, I forgive you and all is forgotten. you got to let it go. That sounds good. I trust you, but you ain't got no mustache, so I ain't listening. Right. <laughs> well, well, here, well, here's one thing I'm not going to let go, all right? I got duped by a Japanese company, okay? <laughs> everybody, know, everybody know I love Adidas. I'm an Adidas fan. I love Adidas. All these Adidas online, I thought they was fly. <laughs> so I, I straight up bought them from the Japanese company. Great price. And these are fly. Bam, right? You, oh, you can't. These are fly-ass right? Adidas, right? Yeah, uh -huh. But what do you see wrong with these damn Adidas? Now, what we're going to do is we're going to do a split screen right here we're going to show you an adidas what do you see wrong with these adidas? adidas oh yeah no, no, no what's the no what do you see wrong is the leaf wrong it's, I don't the leaf. bam One, the leaf two, is wrong three. look at this <laughs> look, look at the adidas leaf i got some it goddamn line. mutant you got a four leaf clover <laughs> <laughs> We don't, we don't put this picture of so this Japanese over. company right here, fuck y'all, man. Yeah, y'all got Those are lucky sneakers, man. You got a four-leaf like clover right They look like a weed thing. <laughs> <laughs> These are weedest. <laughs> wow. They got you. They got you. All right, so at the end of the day, you know what? It's okay to have grievances with people, and it's okay to be mad about something and want to defend yourself, but... For us to move on, we all have to let go of the things that were done to us and just leave it into God's hands. Easier like, said than done. All right, gun done deal. Let's find out what's hot right now. Let's talk about some more sexual harassment claims uh, grabbing Matt Lauer by his ass. Uh, he's one of the latest to be let go uh, by NBC. You heard about that last week. It, was, it came as a shock to me. I was shocked when I, I woke shocked. up in the morning to hear Matt Lauer doing that. But also uh, you're hearing congressmen, uh, Charlie Rose Conyers, and... Charlie Rose we talked about a couple of weeks ago. Uh, but these women are coming out. It's a good thing that these women are coming out and speaking out and talking about these creeps, these predators uh, in the workplace. But what about sometimes when these women, and I'm not saying it happens a lot, but when it does happen and they falsely accuse a man of sexual harassment or go as far as rape or whatever, what should happen to the woman? I think it should be a charge, but it's like hard to prove, you know what I mean? But like I also when I I also feel that it should be something some repercussions when a woman puts a baby on a man that Yes. That, you know, I, I agree with that. I don't yes. like don't I don't I have a policy. I don't have sex with more than one man in one month. I just don't. I don't. <laughs> oh, Corey, 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 Corey Holcomb. I know you think all women ain't shit. Wait, wait, no, no. I know you for years. I already know where you're going with this. I know you think all women ain't shit, but you also know me. Okay, and not every woman is like the lousy bitches that you're talking about all the time. I don't have sex with all. You just, just said you you know that I know all women ain't shit, and it's like I don't no, feel you, that way. But you think that, but but you're having a reaction when I said I don't have sex with more than one person one month. I don't. I just don't. 
Right, because but, you know and what? Then, and then I hit the thing, but what was you thinking? I'm thinking he's looking at me with a side eye like, no, you're right. He and was thinking like, damn, I ain't got a shot. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no, seriously. That's what I got. Am I right? I, I, I personally, and fuck it, call me a unicorn, whatever. I don't have to lie. I'm fucking 44 years old. That's, like, I, I don't have to lie about who I am as a woman. Corey wasn't doing that. Though. I feel like it's ridiculous. Like, when you have sex with more than one guy, especially if you raw dogging these, like, what are you doing? You'll not know who their baby daddy is, and you just... Opening yourself to a life like you're just, it's just gonna be fucked up. Shh. No, ladies, Shh. do not have sex with more than one man in the same month. Have, you have, have a, all the sex you want. No, don't listen to Claudia. No. Do you? You're a grown ass woman. Excuse me, cameraman. You want to fuck me? No, no, no. Don't. no. Look at no. that, Claudia. Do We're not trying to ruin. Try to run other women's pussy. Do not have sex with more than one man in the same month. Bullshit. And there's no, there's no confusion. If you Bullshit. get pregnant, you know exactly. Who to pin the baby on? <laughs> That's bullshit. In the same month. Women, I'm in a relationship, so I don't care. I'm out of this. Y'all talk about this. No, 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 but you're grown. But you're also, you want to sleep with. But you are in sleep this because there, there's with. also another story that came out. But, uh, you know, did you hear about that with the uh, the guy who uh, <laughs> I mean, took care of baby? I'm sorry. Took, no, no. Will I'm you finish? Okay. Fine. Took care of baby for six years, mm-hmm. right? After a woman yeah, that's lied. That's horrible. That that was his kid. That's yeah. not cool. And the reason he found out is because she was trying to get child support for him. So he went. Found out, got the blood test. Found Same out. Same thing that happened to me. It, yep. it happened to you. You're with a stripper, right? Yeah. Yeah, we no, talked that was about a that on the show. Girl. That was a tell, story. tell our listeners, just read your so, so we can go back to what happened to me. I met this girl, and uh, she told me she was pregnant by me because we was having sex, so I had to take her word. So. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we was having unprotected sex. Don't right? get mad at me, man. You know what I'm saying? So she told me she was having my baby. So for the nine months, I took all the stuff, and then she had my kid. Wink, wink. And I raised this baby for nine months, and we started fighting because we wasn't going to be together because I was dating other women. And she was like, uh, uh, you can't see your kid. And I was like, well, you know what? I'm going to put the white man on you. So I took her to court <laughs> and get a blood test, and then I found out it wasn't my kid. And she told the judge I played him. You know, he had a job. So <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, wow. She said I did what any mother would have did. I was like, wow. So wow. what happened? Well, shit, they took my name off the birth certificate, and here we are. And you haven't seen the kid do. since? No, so I mean, you- my mother see her on, like, you know, but you you won't see the kid. I mean, you loved that kid for nine months like it was your own, right? And you got like she's twenty one now. I don't even know her. So you got no you had no attachment in those nine Hell months. Hell no. After, I mean, after the first nine months, of course I was hurt. But shit, it's twenty some years but, later. But Steve, tell them what you did while the baby was being delivered. <laughs> oh no, that's what happened when the baby was. Being okay, delivered? speak so, on so, it. No, no. So okay, here it is. He told me he tried to put me under there because I used to be a dog. Okay, oh, you, so me well, and yeah, the girl you. wasn't together. <laughs> So the doctor was kind of fine, and I explained to her, I said, listen, you know, this ain't my woman. And she was like, you disgust me. You trying to holler at me while she having your baby? I'm like, that's not my woman. I'm just manning up trying to take care of my kid. And he laughing like, was that really wrong? That's pimp shit right there, man. I ain't mad at you. Your girl is about to have what? No, 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 not my girl. She wasn't my girl. Corey, how do you feel about that? I can't no bitch tell me nothing about nothing. <laughs> I don't give a fuck what you say. Corey. I don't, I, look, just because I got with you, I, I know how the game go. I, I, I used to live with a hooker. <laughs> they fuck multiple guys all the time. So if some girl tell me she got my baby, um, maybe after we prove it, I take it from there. But I'm not in your well, life because you told now. me that you pregnant. Cause I, this was 1996, man. Oh, okay. You still a young man. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So somebody going to tell you, you going to man up? I didn't have a daddy, so I refused to have my Who's kid. Who's the pappy? You know what I'm saying? I didn't have a daddy. I don't know about y'all, but somebody tell me they have my kid. And you had a daddy. He just was on Nobody crack. really calls out all the shit that, I'm sorry. that, that women do because everybody want to stay in the good graces of the media <laughs> and, and the right wing. But it's some scandalous bitches in this world. What do they do, Corey? These bitches at the hospital right now. Trying to sign the rights to the body of somebody's father so they can get the the, <laughs> the, 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 the the all the stuff that come with the dead motherfucker. It's, oh it's evil God. bitches everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> Ain't worth a damn dime. And everybody be trying to act like it be people talking about you should never hit a woman. Y'all saw that shit on the on the view with Whoopi? <laughs> you should hit a woman, all right? You should, you should, you should. Let me tell you something. If a woman hits you, you have to make sure she understands the dangers. She is causing herself. Oh, and sometimes Corey. that means passing a lick back. Have you no, ever hit a woman? No. Hell, motherfucker, you had to hit a woman. I will not condone this. I ain't this. never, I ain't never stole go. on a woman, like straight up fist. First. But I didn't hit a girl with this. And sometimes <laughs> right under that nose. And that girl never hit some, me again. You can kill someone like that. She never hit me again, Because though. she probably died. 
No, she ain't back. <laughs> she died. She's this no longer terrible. with us. She knows that if I hit him, he'll hit me back. But here's the thing I will hey, say. Hey, the host and the uh, staff of uh, Unstable do not condone uh, domestic violence. Right. <laughs> I do. That's I got to say, say, say this. I got to say this. I will say this. Whoopi Goldberg back. did agree with you. Whoopi Everybody Goldberg. was clapping for Whoopi. I don't agree with that. I don't think you should ever hit a woman. But Whoopi did say you can't just That's roll why up you got on got with that baby, G. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, okay, you has anyone else? These evil hoes. Has anyone else here hit a woman, guy? Doggy style, I smacked that ass like a motherfucker. Have you ever hit a woman with your hands? Not at all. I, I never drove a woman to that point. Corey, you have. Steve. Steve. I you say you her. never drove a woman to that point. You ain't got to drive them to that point. They will hit you because, especially you, you little nigga. <laughs> 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 Bitches always fight little niggas. <laughs> And you know what? I ain't gonna lie. I have I've had some women say, "Oh, I can take you. I ain't scared of you." I, like, the, God damn. the dude I stole on was little. Mm. One thing I gotta say about this man. One reason why we love Corey Hoker, man, is his stand up, yes. man, because it's honest, man. It's and what you see on stage is what what he is off stage, man. That's why he's one of my favorite comics, man. And I ain't gonna front. We 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 in the same genre, uh, same uh, generation of comics, man. But I'm a fan, man, because you keep it 100. Every time I think I have no filter. Man, I, I see one of your shows, man. I'm like, man, I ain't shit. I bet you if you could line up all the women that I've been around, they will, they will not call me a bully. They will not say I'm some motherfucker who do them wrong. But I think it's insane to think that a woman is not above being hit because it's bitches out here that'll molest your child while you at work. And if you walk in on that, what you going to do? Well, yeah, no, yeah, you're you're yeah. you a snap. Yeah, mm -hmm. you're right. Mm -hmm. I agree there's certain things that are unforgivable and that deserve that, but then there's also people that uh, react quickly over... There are a lot of bitch ass men too that a lot that'll snap on something. We just talked about silly, a whole line. You know and they was man? raised by a single mom. <laughs> you can't always put on the woman though. I just talked about a whole bunch of no, men. You we can't always put it on the woman, I'll, but you can't I'll, always I'll put it on like the man. This. I'll say it like this. I don't this. always put it on anyone. I feel like it's it's case by case thing. You know what I'm saying? Like Look, I feel like you blanket statements are always wrong. Blanket right. statements are always wrong. And that's I why I don't, I don't make them. I don't I don't think it's ever a reason to put your hand on a woman. I mean, just me personally, I understand where you're You're a good brother, but you lost. But 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 you know, because I was raised a good brother, but you're mother was abused, you know. Oh, see, that's different. So I saw her getting hit by men that was supposed to love and protect her. You say men? Men, It yes. was multiple guys? Well, yeah, my, my biological father and my stepfather, yes, I saw that. I mean, one of my first memories is seeing my mother being abused, is being hit. And see, I, you so come I, across like a nice guy. No, no. But I'm, I see that rage in oh, you. No, no. I, I, mean, I, I see it, it in them eyes. Look at them eyes. I mean, it's there. I, 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 what? I, 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 I there, but I know how to control that rage Yo, when it comes to Don't let that woman. no mustache fool you. That nigga a beast. <laughs> no, I'm telling you. Oh, don't let the camera crew be late one day. Oh, <laughs> oh that's true. <laughs> right, right. But, you know, that nigga throw his mustache on and them sunglasses. <laughs> but God damn it, what time was you supposed to be here? But what I'm saying is with domestic violence, I think the, the only thing I ever learned from my biological father is he told me, and he didn't was this do this himself. No, this wasn't a hit man. This was biological. Like the, the one that wasn't around. Uh, the miss man. The one that missed right. me all the time. <laughs> the, miss <laughs> the miss man. He, he missed me all That's this fucking life. Uh, so he, he told me, it's like any time a woman is trying to you know hit you or do something to you know, irritate you or uh, agitate you or whatever, take a walk. So I take a walk. And I've been, I've been married twice. And I've been in situations where both my wives came at me a certain way, wouldn't let me leave or whatever. And yes. Yeah, two-time lose. I know that. I said that Think before. Let it but at go. the same time, I've always been able to walk away because I've known that I don't want to be that man that was abusing my mom. I don't want to be that guy. But do you do so you think only, walking only away that. is the answer, especially when you say you've been married twice, no, bro? Well, if I if I got to protect myself. Now, there was one time when I was in Hawaii. My, we got a little intoxicated. We was all we had a lot of people over and whatnot. And Tell my wife, truth. she charged me. No, <laughs> no, no, no. Devil, right? She charged me. She charged me, threw me into a china cabinet. I hear a bunch of glass break. Oh, and, you know, and all of a sudden you think you're cut. So you react. So I grabbed her and I put her on the ground, but I wasn't going to hit her. I just put her on the ground. I had to control the situation. I think right. as a man, if you're stronger than a woman especially, just control the situation and let it go. Yeah, when they say hit, it's like there's no hit that a woman, for the most part, Will do to you that will really hurt shit, you. Shit, my woman, a man. Okay, but this woman that they, man, my cousin got shot by his, got shot by his wife. They on, on their wedding night. No, okay, no, okay. somebody's got a gun. You got. I'm not making this up. I'm all about protecting that Chicago. Your family in Chicago. That, you, you know that's your family, an extreme niggas. case. Stop it. But this, I, if I hit a guy, it's not really gonna hurt. I want to hear this story. But do you hear what you? You should write that down. And look at it when you said, if I hit a guy, it's not really going to hurt him. You're making excuses for what you're doing. No, I'm not. 
Yes, you are. I'm not you... a habitual <laughs> man beater. Well, but you just said I, if you I hit a guy, you're not going to hurt him. I'm habitual saying if I beater. did, because we're talking about we're talking about hypotheticals here, right? So if I did, I don't think I feel like an average punch from you can really you can really break a woman's jaw. You really could. That's why a woman shouldn't hit a man. She shouldn't, and I'm not pro woman hitting a man. I'm not like I I feel like when a woman says like the things I'm saying, you're you're people take it as I'm pro woman. I'm not. I don't think anyone should be hitting anyone. I really agreed, don't. Agreed. But like That's a woman hit, if I slap you and you punch me, you could really put me in a coma. So don't I'll, slap me. I, I know that. <laughs> but I said if it's I did. It's real simple. But it's I, not hard. But I started this, my comments off with, I don't believe that a woman should. I don't think anyone should be hitting anyone. No. Exactly. You said that, but then you said, but if I hit you but, and because, if I slap you and you punch me, you wrong. That's not I, right. I didn't say you wrong. I didn't say if I slap you and you hit me, you're wrong. I never said that. Please don't put words in my mouth. No, I no, said, no. What I, you said is, this is what you said. You said, if I slap you and you punch me, am I Am I right? Is that I didn't say think? right or wrong. I said you will. You can break someone's jaw because you're stronger. I'm not saying either one of them is right. That's why I said no one should hit anyone. But I'm saying, as okay, as the, the dude person, who hit back, he's not wrong. He's showing you this is why you shouldn't slap me. He's not Bye. wrong, but he can also kill someone. So don't slap him. I know that, but <laughs> shit does happen. That's what I'm saying. Well, I'm not it's, saying it's right. I'm just saying, as the, when you when you have more strength, you have more responsibility. I think you no, do. No, 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 no. When you, you have do. more strength, that don't put no responsibility on yes, you, you like do. that. No, no, when no, you yes, you do. Strength, absolutely. When Corey, you have absolutely. This, no joke. Uh, when you got strength, my... you should be able to tell somebody, look, that ain't what you want to do. That's you giving them the warning. Don't do that. But Corey, can I tell you something? My barber told me this is a true story. He said, as a man, it's our job to be stronger than them. He That's said, true. mentally too. If your woman roll up on you, it's your job as a man to just walk away. You got like to. on one hand, you it's like to. y'all are more emotional. Y'all, are more, yes, we are. He told me straight up. He we said, don't are. ever. He said, that's not. He said, that's not I your place. I disagree with that. He said, your woman gets emotional. You not emotional. You walk away. Men, men are unless just, if your life is in danger and you got to protect yourself, out. I understand. Men, men, but other, than, other than that, you, there is no reason for you to put a hand. Men are more. Men have been taught that women are supposed to rule you, and that's just not what's really supposed to happen. Women are here for you. And if you're around a woman that a hit on you, you need to get away from, from her and reevaluate yourself. You should, I agree with that. But if women think that because somebody's stronger than them that you are not supposed to retaliate because of that, um, you you walking around with somebody who's going to put seeds in the world who think like that. Mm. And that that's a real problem. That's why the world is for the chaos. What about restraining someone and not punching them in the face? Look, like if I, a woman I, slaps I don't you. like bullies. Mm-hmm. I don't like guys who um, overpower men or women just because they can. Right. But I'm just trying to say, I would say to my daughter, mother, any woman I love, do not be fighting no man. Put Come in get me. Mm-hmm. But put your Come situation like, like the Jay-Z Solange situation. With Solange going off on Jay-Z, Jay-Z handled that situation the right way. I think he made a fool out of himself. You think really? so? You think he should have hit Solange? She never hit him with the purse. She he missed. made a fool out of himself, and she made a fool out of her sister. Because you in here trying to fight her husband on an elevator in front of other people. Mm, well, I don't think she knew. I think because of the camera, that's why everybody knew that the situation happened. Wasn't, but it, wasn't it another dude on the elevator? There was like more the people on the elevator. Beyonce was there. Beyonce was there. Beyonce was there. And that security, security. And, and, security. security. And, and, you know, and that security like, guard seeing a lot of different stuff. Why would you do stuff. your sister husband like that in front of everybody? Because because emotions. In front of another man. Because they tight. You know how it is. Emotions. All right. Hey, let's 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 get some uh crazy bitch. Nice stuff. This good. <laughs> oh, man, this we're just letting it flow. Well. I love it, let's, man. Let's get some uh, some it. love in the air because, uh, Guy, you just came back from St. Louis, a very special occasion over the Hell weekend. Hell yeah. And yeah, awesome. man. Yes. Yeah, best birthday party I ever went to in my life, man. My mom turned 80 years old, man. 80 years young, actually, man. 80, man. And and she was so happy, man. And, and I'm going to tell you right now, uh, <laughs> my mom is funny, all right? My mom, I was, put the video, I was putting the video together for my mom. Because, you know, I want to put it in chronological order of what happened in her life from the time she was born all the way up until now. And, you know, because she's a church lady, there's certain things she didn't want in that video, man. Because, you know, I have I have five siblings. I have an older sister who my mom had before she met my dad. But no one really ever knows that, you know. Yeah, Roberta. No, uh, Christina. Okay. Right? So, but my dad took her in just like it was his own kid, right? Bye. 
So when I wanted to put the thing in chronological order, because she met my dad after she had, you know, my <laughs> no. older sister. Mom was like, uh, I don't think you want to do that. I'm like, well, why not? Because she, she said she don't want the church people to know that she had that baby out of wedlock. I'm like, Mom, you 80. Right. That was 58 fucking years ago. What are you, yeah. right, right, what are you right. tripping off of it for? And she's like, no, just try some other way to do the video. So I had to change my whole game up. I'm like, you still holding on to that. It's like, come on, Mom. Yeah. But now I'm worried about Mom turning 80. Because now I'm a no dad has passed away. He's gone on. And at 80, women reach another sexual peak. You've heard me talk no about this. No way. No, I'm serious. So I'm, I'm I'm wondering if, you know. Is she in a nursing home? No. That's, not, where, it go, that's where it goes I down. know. The STDs in a nursing home has gone up. It is. It's really high. Exactly. So, they don't use condoms because they're yeah, not they don't, they don't Exactly. Right. So I'm a little worried about my mom. Hormones getting up. You know, I may have to move out to L.A. with me so I can keep an eye on her ass, man. I don't want to have, Yo, you know. Look, if she's still moving, show the video right here. This is the video. His video, right. My mom dances. This is her entrance at her 80th celebration birthday party. She was grooving. She can move. You see, she still got it, man. <laughs> right, right, and my mom still look good, man. Is your mom so, dating anybody now? No, no, sure? she's not. You think I, she's hey. getting any sex right now? Oh I hope God. not. But you know what's funny is that Joe, my brother Joe, the brother Joe, he was in college back in the late '80s, mm-hmm. in the early '80s. He used to work at a nursing home, right? And the call buttons that they used to use to call the stations was always going off, and they thought something was going on with the old ladies. But the the, the, the old ladies would use them as dildos. <laughs> and then and then they used to take the, the brushes away from the old ladies because they used to handle the brush of dildos. So uh, my mom could be old with a brush. Your mother used a brush of dildos? I don't know. I doubt it. <laughs> she's a little, she's a little, she's when a When you're, when you're 80 years old, do you still, does she still get moist? I don't know. I don't know. Hey! I don't, hey, I'm hey, just, man, I'm hey. just saying, you know, I mean. My grandma is 92, and she always wanted to fuck B.B. King. B.B. King? And, so and Lucille? Done. I That's found so fucking some hilarious. tickets to the B.B. King concert. It was on uh-huh. my birthday a few years ago, and I was like, Grandma, I, I got you tickets to the B.B. King. But I had a, a party <laughs> in New York. I couldn't go with her. She's like, I'm not going if you don't go. But she wanted to fuck him. I said, Grandma, he's married. And she's like, I don't give a shit. So she told me that. <laughs> they had groupies typhoon. back then? Yes. And then now, but how do you deal with Grandma so, having gonorrhea, though? Finish, 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 finish. Well, my finish. grandmother, she, sa- she says that she would use Vaseline to keep it together. For lubrication. <laughs> Old school Vaseline, like that's what they would use. <laughs> he gonna rub Put Lucille. some sab on it. Put he some sab on it. He gonna rub Lucille on her ass. <laughs> Corey, what's the oldest uh, lady that you'd, uh, you'd have sex with? I don't know how old that lady was. But you did she have did she have gray hairs on her vagina? Yeah, she was she was oh I would consider her sixties, but she was tight. Sixties, yeah. uh, like, yeah. Tight. Well, if you had to estimate, like what would you think? Like fifty, uh, sixty, seventy? No way. Seventy? Yeah. About seventy? Yeah. yeah. How was the sex with her? It was good. She was healthy and everything. Well, like did she get on? Was she aggressive? Did she get on top? Did she like suck dick? Wait, like, wait, 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 wait. You seventy? Seven? God damn, nigga. No, there's some sexy seventy year olds out there. Trust I'm, me. How old were you? I'm impressed. How old were you at the time? I don't know. Nigga, probably about. I'm, I'm not sure how old I was, but she was way older than me. Yeah, okay. you think she's yeah, well, 70, she's still way older than yeah, me. Right, right, right. She's probably like dead now. I moved out here when up. I was 31, but I hadn't moved out here yet. Oh, wow. You were in your 20s. You was with hey, someone man. like 40 years older than what you. What made you do that? Hey, man, she used to um, she used to take care of me. She bought you Jordan. She don't look yeah. more <laughs> She used to take care of me. She okay, so let me ask you. Were you were you disgusted at all when you have a sex? Well, was it, what, did you have a nice body? I was proud of her. Okay. So, so she bought you George, but Jordan was a rookie back then. She's you Jordan. Jordan was still at North Carolina. Right, 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 right. When y'all had sex, did she call you young man? No, she made them old lady sound. Like what? what? Like, give us an example. <laughs> <laughs> How'd it go? How'd it go, Corey? <laughs> them old lady sounds. Did you feel like, okay, did you feel like you had to be more, like, fragile, <laughs> like, delicate with her? Or did you do that? No, she didn't like that delicate yeah. shit. She wanted you to be Give rough. it to me. <laughs> 
<laughs> Did she call you any like old names like Whippersnapper? Or, like, no, no, she wasn't very. Oh, you young motor snaggers be doing it, boy. Did she have her teeth? She had her teeth. She had her teeth. I I think them was I her heard teeth. Was she your, sagging? Was she sagging? Was she still? No, 70. she actually was put together. She was she put was, the, okay. It's weird. Yo, she's let's, a badass seven year old. Less metabolism. <laughs> let's not get it twisted. There's some sexy older women out no, there. No, I'm not saying that. It's okay. That, 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 are, that can still put it down. So what, Seventy. <laughs> so what's the oldest and youngest y'all been with? Guy, go first. Oldest and youngest. I know. I was at one time. I was in Atlanta and and was <laughs> fucking this old broad. And her son was a fan. It was weird because they still live together. And I was trying to hit it. And she introduced me to her son. And he was a fan. Want to take pictures. And I'm like, you know, I'm trying to go ahead and fuck your mama, right? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> and what about the old? 18 year old. So, so, and then the she youngest? Was, she, she, had to, she had to be in her, she had to be in her 60s oh, back then. 18. And then the youngest? The youngest? The youngest I, I messed with was when, when I was like in my 40s, maybe. or No, not my 40s. You well, yeah. No, no, it was, it was uh, 23, maybe. Okay. 23. Corey, Corey Holcomb? Mm-hmm. University of Alabama, I did a show. This girl, she was 18 that night. How old was that you? Oh, my night, God. How old, God. That <laughs> night. And how old were you? you 30, 40? It was her birthday. I don't know when I did that show, but I was just, I, yeah. <laughs> she got, I, I, she I, got I could look that, that up. Did you check her ID? Yeah, she had, it was her birthday. Oh, it was her birthday. Uh, at the, okay. At the, at the um, show they have at their homecoming. Okay. And she was 18. I was wow. laughing. Wow, okay. Like, they can't then, do nothing to me. And then the oldest was a seven-year-old bride. 70. The 70 year old. All right, Steve. Steve. Uh, um, she was 19. I was 33. Um, he knows about her. Um, and then uh, she broke his heart too. He was hurt. <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah. yeah, she went back to the dude that was beating her. And Caucasian. Yeah, well, it happens. Ah. Yeah. Oh. She was a pilgrim. It happens. Mm-hmm. But anyway, and then the oldest, uh, she was 50. It was a chick from Iran. She was over here a teacher. And I met her at uh, up at uh, Pepper. Um, not, he's in San Pepper. Francisco. It was called Pepper. Yeah, up there. Oh yeah, you that's remember? the one he sent the video. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> you remember he sent us the video? Yeah, yeah. Steve, Steve be doing that bullshit. I don't man. do that no more. I'm he sent the video. This girl's on. The, all of a sudden, we get a video. We get a text. Check this chick oh, Steve, out. Check this out. And it's and a it's video. We don't fucking... know what it is. And all of a sudden, you play the video. Yeah. And you see this woman, and all you hear is Steve's voice, like, "Yeah, do it for daddy. <laughs> do it for. They call me daddy. <laughs> daddy. <laughs> I want to see that shit. Mm. I'm about to." Stay it was a long time ago. She what about made- you, Claudia? Um, the oldest was 47, your oh. friend. And uh-huh. the youngest was... Um, <laughs> 18. No, he was like 12 years younger, but I had just had a root canal done. I had a temporary crown on my tooth. And like it was like kind of dark in the room. And I was riding him, and my fucking tooth came loose. <laughs> So I didn't want him to see it, so I thought he didn't see it. I was like, and I put on a nice hand. He goes, was that your tooth? <laughs> he fucked you toothless. And so. This is why I love this show, right? I fucking, he was like, I don't know, 12 years younger. Oh, he said, is that your tooth? I said, mind you, don't worry about grown folks' business, nigga. What wow. size Jordans you wear? Wow. That's hilarious. Right, right. Anyways, Mike? So when I was 17, I was, uh, this is a true story. You can ask my mom, a uh, 27-year-old. She was my substitute teacher. Mm-hmm. And the reason my mom found out about it is because my ex-girlfriend was jealous and told my mom that my st- my teacher, my, step- my my substitute teacher, was screwing me, right? Yeah. But she worked in the mall, too. She was a part-time teacher, worked in the mall, and so she was buying me, you know, Jordans so and all that So you was one stuff. of those kids that was abused well, that, was, that we yeah, see on the news. Well, I was abused. I was seven. So, but then in my 40s, days. I've had a, a 24-year-old when I was in my 40s. And uh, mm-hmm. the reason I know she... I, I felt odd because I said, how old is your mom? And she said her mom was the same age I was. <laughs> right. Try yeah. to holler at her mom when you threw it up. Nah, well, her mom didn't look as good as her. Now, let me ask 24. a question. Why aren't women gone after as hard as men when they mess with underage guys? And Because mm. they can ruin guys, you know, you know, future as well. But when, when, when I mean, I'm not saying it's right for men to do it, but women do it a lot, too. A lot, of, a lot of teachers, a lot of teachers fuck... <clears throat> Their students and get caught, but you don't. You, it's not publicized as much, or it's not scrutinized as much, right. and that's just, just as damaging. Like Steve, Steve had an older woman uh, molest him, right? Did she make you like go down on her? All of that, man. So oh you, my wow, god! So you were really bro. molested as a child. We talked about this before. She was unattractive. No, she looked like me, nigga. We family. Oh, <laughs> you need counseling, bro. I, I go to some, counseling. You need some sessions. <laughs> And that same thing happened to R. Kelly, too. I read an article in GQ magazine last year where R. Kelly was molested when he was young, too, well, I ain't by, be by with a relative. Girls, I'm just saying. Yeah. But so sometimes when you're scarred like that as a kid, you have you have a, you have a fork in the road. You no, can, it made get, me a little bit of a hoe, but now I ain't messing with no children. Let's but you can, either, you can either go that same route or you can not go that route and, and make sure it doesn't happen. Most right. people that were molested or raped, as, like, younger, that makes right. them a little bit... Um, I guess you say promiscuous because they, right. they don't value themselves. I used to be right. like I that. I think the problem is with that situation is um, 
a lot of times, like, I've talked to men, and I ask them their first sexual experience, and when they say some crazy young age, and I say, so you were molested. They don't want to admit that. It's like, it's like no, 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 I, I was I was that dude. I, I smashed a teacher. And it's like, the attitude is different toward right. that. Where don't a nobody girl, like to tell the truth yeah, about yeah, what it really exactly. is. Yeah. Yeah. It's like all the guys ain't came out about Russell Simmons, but it's coming. Wow, so what do you think about that situation? Yeah, yeah, what's going on with Russell? I'm just saying, it's like you get a lot of women coming forward, but uh, this Hollywood, this is uh, potluck. This nigga. Everybody get down with everybody out here. So you and believe the allegations against Russell, the, the, uh, the, the guys coming out? Now, I believe, believe it's going to come out against all them people because, I, I mean, since I moved to Hollywood, I'm numb to it. Nothing shocks me no more. It ain't like somebody yeah, that's saying, crazy. Like, he messing with he. He was like, so? Hey, Corey, what do you think the percentage of of male, like, of celebrities out here, of people in the business that, like, people are, you know, what do you think the percentage of them are, like, not who they say they are? Are putting from the rough. I'm being nice. I would say about 85%. Are not, or are doing, are, are, are I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Men 85%? Mess, men messing with men? It's a lot. 85% of the dudes in Hollywood who keep getting runs. I'm talking about they in the game. I would, agree, I would agree with that. Not the dudes who might get something here and then disappear. <laughs> that means, oh, you wasn't with the program. Hey, but if you, talking keep, about series regulars? if you keep hitting licks in Hollywood, I'm just going to be like, oh, so you in the program, huh? Yeah. Wow. That's what it really I agree, is. I agree with you. I agree with you. For sure. Wow. I ain't mad sure. at him no more. When I, Fuck this. When I'm going to go, first work, I'm gonna go work at Arby's. I ain't I doing that. I was good. I was shocked. I didn't know what to say to somebody who with me and who messed with me and but now that I've been around it, I just be like, oh, that's what they do. Have you ever met someone that you I won't say idolized, but you was a fan of, and then you got out here and you like, damn, you too? Of course. Um, I'm saying like it, it it ain't that that's just being nice with it. Mm. See, once I got out here, you come out here, you you all ready to make it. Yeah. Exactly. When you find out what the game really is, mm -hmm. it took me it. about three years to come out of my depression. Like, I'll never be part of that. Yeah. Not because I'm acting funny, it's because I'm not cut like that. Yeah. Right. right. I've been to people's houses. While I look around, I'll be like, oh, this is to see who I am. Mm -hmm. <laughs> are, are, are there, are there <laughs> any stand up <laughs> comedians on the oh, down low? They do really? it like there's that. A lot, there's a lot of them. A lot yeah. of stand up Absolutely. comedians on the down low? Absolutely. Really? Okay. And I'm telling you, like, men who mess with men, all of them are not bad people, meaning like, because I was brought up thinking, oh, if you're a man, mess with man, something wrong with you like that. I put it like this. I don't agree with what you do, but I've met some good people, but they have a fetish for men. I mean, some good guys who prefer men. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You ever have a Terry Crews moment? No. No one's I, ever tried you? Not like that. I mean, Terry mm -hmm. said that dude walked up to him and grabbed him. That's mm -hmm. grabbed in front his of his wife. Yeah, that... I mean, I, I know the position Terry Crews was in because you know Terry Crews was was hitting licks out here. You know what I'm saying? He was he was doing things. So you would be in your mind, you be like, man, I don't want to mess it up for this, that, and the other. But there are people that he will said he did it twice. not be able to control themselves if you challenge their manhood like that, mm -hmm. where you bold enough to touch somebody. But I have met those people who are aggressive like that, and I always try to go away because I, everybody can be. Put, in a, put on the spot where you do something, you know you're not going to be able to take it back, but at that moment, you don't care. Do you believe that if you do not acquiesce to some of these requests from some of these guys out there that are, are like that, that it, it's going to affect your career? I don't care how big of a star you are. Like Terry Crews, now that he's come out and he's said this, do you think it's going to affect his career? I think it's going to affect his career. I mean, he's still I'm on Brooklyn Nine-Nine right no, now. I mean, right? but, you know, that's, that means something else has to come along eventually, right? Nobody can stop my steps. These, these steps are guided by God. the higher power. That's yes. how I feel. And ain't nobody, I don't care if you mad at me. I didn't I didn't told powerful people shit <laughs> that has set me backwards. Mm -hmm. But I ain't I'm good. I'm from the projects, man. I eat good. Mm -hmm. you know and, and, and and that's and that's what and that's what's, what's crazy is that, you know, my mom's my mom's 80th birthday was called Spiritually Bold. And and we named it that because when my dad died, I, I told my mom she was arrogant. And she said, I'm not arrogant, I'm spiritually bold. And it took me three years to figure out what, what spiritually bold meant. And to me, it meant she is so has so much faith in God that no matter what happens, she's gonna be right. all right. And 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 guys like Corey and and, and when you when your faith is so strong, God is bigger than Hollywood. <clears throat> so if you stick by you stick to your morals and your and your and your whatever scruples and whatever, then and you got faith in God, you you can say no and not that, to worry about exactly. that. That story he said I relate to it so much. Let me tell you something, man. When you are really talented and you bold enough 
to do what you got to do, mm-hmm. something always happened for the better. Right. My whole yeah. life, that has always happened. When I drove out here, I didn't know what I was going to do. But some told me it's time to get away from Chicago and this try something. This brother came along. I remember when Every you did Jay time I, I bet on myself, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. something good happened. How about so when that? You left that? When you left that station mm-hmm. and that dude was trying to hate on you, I promise you, man, if you believe in yourself, he will not be able to stop you. And that's with anything. No, I don't think anybody's going to stop you. That's why right. Yep. Can't so nobody stop me. So what do you think about this business like? It feels like the people that there's a lot of talented people that really it takes them like they on that 20 year plan really to really blow up. And then you see the people that come in. I was having a conversation with my girl about this on the way up here. We were just talking like, damn, it seems like we're in a weird time now where like the the fuck shit and the, and the wicked stuff is getting kind of rewarded short term, of course. Right. But it seems like the people that just marry a basketball player or, or just fuck with some dude or do some <laughs> foul shit on it, you know, whatever. Like the the Instagram phenomenons, they're like they're getting put on, and it's kind of discouraging to those of us that have talent that really work but hard. But it doesn't last. A it, lot it, of doesn't. Time. It, it doesn't. It doesn't. Mm-hmm. It doesn't. It but doesn't isn't last. it? Do you feel frustration when you see that? Of course, you know that it's it's not fair um, for the work you put in and the talents you have. But I know they got a lot of outlets that they gotta have this uh, stuff produced. Mm-hmm. So they will use. Right. They, there is no more talent scouts. <laughs> it's it's right. who got how many followers. Yeah, exactly. So they grab the riffraff mm-hmm. and they allow the riffraff to eat, but the riffraff don't eat that long. I've seen it happen, especially in the entertainment business. Mm-hmm. Um, see, especially with comedy, you can make them think you funny on the internet, but when you For out there in front minutes. of them people who have worked all week mm-hmm. and they bought that <laughs> ticket, they paid to park, they buy drinks, and you no good. They remember that, and they won't come back to see you again. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. See, but, but see, the, and that's what that's the problem I have with it, and I'm not mad at those Instagram comics who, who, who blow up like that. It's just I want you to, to work on your crap, because what happens is it kind of hurts us. Because sometimes you got somebody coming to a comedy show for the first time and see live comedy, and they experience is something crappy like that, and now they may not never ever come back to another live comedy right. show. And that's what fucked it up for the for the vets. They do TJ Johnson and Friends or whoever the new twerking contest yeah. and shit. They remember they remember them people who were no good. And I'm telling you, if you want people to spend money to come see you, you better be prepared when you hit that stage with your time. You that better. goes for everything. E- even if you're a public speaker, people yeah. who pay money to see you are watching you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And if you do not do a job that's satisfactory. I'm telling you, you eat it's good. It's going to be on Twitter you eat instantly good in 2016, that 17, right. 18. But 2019, ain't nobody coming to see you no more. Corey, you're you're known for like your um your honesty and you know you're very inappropriate, which I love. So I want to ask you a couple questions. I'm just gonna go off the cup. I'm drunk at this it's point. It's just the truth. I don't uh-oh, think it's inappropriate. Uh-oh. I just think it's the truth. You know, I get drunk. That's when I have whatever. Go ahead. Okay, so um. You got to give a message to uh, women out there, <laughs> right, that are watching this show, that believe in the love story and that want to get married, want to settle down. What would you say to them? What your mama went through, you probably going to go through. <laughs> but there's a way you can change it. It takes a lot of discipline, and it takes putting all that uh, 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 pride and emotion aside and really learning the game. College is not fair to 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 people Especially, especially in my opinion, women, mm-hmm. as they get them degrees, but they go out in the world not knowing nothing about how to live with a man or pick a man mm-hmm. that's going to do right by them. Okay. They don't know nothing about that. So it doesn't matter if your degree <laughs> is to be even a judge. You're going out in this world to destroy it if you don't know how to have a family, raise a family, do right by your, do right, watch this, this is really going to make a man. Do right by your man, do right by your kids, do right by yourself. Mm-hmm. In that order. Mm-hmm. Because you shouldn't be with no man if you don't look at him like somebody who is the king of the house. That's right. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. most women get the sucker that make them feel good about whoever they want to be. And that's why the world uh, is in chaos, because we brought up wrong. I have another question. Mm. Women that are so-called hoes and bust downs and who have maybe, you know, they started off their life fucked up. Thoughts. Is there hope for them? <clears throat> Can they be redeemed? Can they be saved? Hookers are some of the most, um, they have, so hookers tell you the truth. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about women who just really know what it is. They've been around motherfuckers who done told them the game. Them the ones who tell you the truth. It's the other bitches that fuck up the world because they <laughs> act like they're good people, but their track record on their vagina shows different. <laughs> Do you believe 
that there are good women out there because it feels like sometimes of course. you think they're all horrible. Of course. And lousy bitches. No, no, no. Lousy bitches feel like that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's how they feel. Mm-hmm. And they try to make everybody think that's how you feel. Mm-hmm. But that's not what it is. And there's a lot of women who's smart enough to see through all that because my comedy shows are full of women. And they laughing and having a good time and high-fiving me. But it is a lot of women with that smile like, <laughs> and you be like, look at this bitch. <laughs> she don't like me. I don't know how she got here. Somebody brought her here. But she's not happy about what I said because it's basically a mirror I'm holding up on stage about her life. What's your, I'm sorry. Can give, I, can I, can I, can give I? Give black, I'm oh, sorry, I just have go, one more. Go, okay, go Give ahead. black men a message of how they can do better in life when it comes to women. Look right in that camera. In right the there. camera. Oh, give black men, say that again. I want to Give mention. black men a message, your advice, the Coy Hoka message, how they could succeed and win in this life with dating, with work, whatever you want to say. Lord have mercy. Can't be with no cutthroat bitch. You cannot win with that cutthroat bitch that talk to you like you ain't shit, mm. brings out the rage, and especially if you're a, a man who work 40, 50 hours a week and you coming home to a woman that doesn't even know how to communicate with you, won't even allow you to talk to her without cutting you off, go away. Get away from that, man. You ain't mm. going to never reach your potential with somebody like that. Now, I can tell the women something, too. Please it's do. Really, no, yeah. It's really Please just do. the opposite. It's just the opposite. If you're around somebody, it's bitches out here who 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 know this motherfucker is a home invasion nigga. <laughs> <laughs> and still fuck with him. <laughs> you know what he do. And you talking about. What you know God where you got that TV from, bro. What? <laughs> what are you talking about? There's blood on the number two, bitch. You don't, hey, man, look. You don't never get away with nothing in this lifetime. If you long enough, if you've been here on this, if you've been here on this planet mm. 30 years or longer, right. you know the game. You just acting dumb. As long as he bringing that money home, they don't care sometimes, man, right? Thank I, you, Carl. I know girls who be with motherfucking murdering motherfuckers. I, but they still fuck with them. Once again, one of the things we love about you is that you are, you know, you you have no filter. You say what's on your mind. I'm talking about there is no joke that's off limit. You use the word bitch a lot. Uh, have you talking about the confrontations? Now you say you got women in, in the audience who give you high fives. Give me your most memorable confrontation after a show. Somebody that just didn't didn't know about Corey Holcomb's stage show, was a little offended, and may have said something to you because we actually had a podcast a couple of weeks ago, and one of the comedians in the audience was oh, yeah. brought up and said, just Jeff Brown. Jeff Brown said the word bitch, and she almost lost her damn mind. Who? A bitch? It, it, <laughs> <laughs> it was a bitch. How could you get mad at the word bitch unless you a bitch? She was saying she was tired of men referring to women as bitches. But she used the word women to take away the disclaimer that everybody who know her call her a bitch. Because you're sitting here yelling and talking crazy to a stranger. This man don't even know you. And it brought all that out of you because you heard the word bitch. I know everything about you I need to know, ma'am. And she did come off crazy as hell. She well, looked she crazy she as hell. She did. She, she came did. off. But I'm talking yeah. about, give me a conference. Anybody that's maybe maybe have not familiar with your show, and they saw your show and you said something because, you know, all you guys have had somebody that's, you know, guy you was telling about somebody in Houston. I knocked, I knocked, I knocked this white boy out for calling me a nigga after the show. Yeah. And I got a two for one because he fell into his girl and she fell down the steps. So I got a two for one. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, man, look, I, if I don't know you and I didn't address you personally and you are upset with <laughs> yeah. me because of what I said on stage. That's a mental disorder that you have. <laughs> it's just you able to duck being committed in this day and time, I think it's easier. But really, you are fucking crazy because I don't even fucking know you. I, I don't know you, ma'am. Yeah. Why are you mad at me? Did you see how many people came to the show? I they was had a good time. And I because was, you didn't, you gonna try to... Sorry. I'm sorry. You no, no, I mad? cut you off. I've been drinking. No, go ahead. <laughs> it's all good. Uh, I didn't, no, I that was rude. Drinking. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I remember being on a show a long time ago, and I was with a girl that you fucked a few times, and we was at your show, and you was you going. You heard I fuck. No, you was fucking her. Who? <laughs> I'm not gonna fuck her. Oh well, whoever the girl is, good luck to you. She was a fuck. she was a lower she was a lower good luck to you. lower level. Anyways, she was getting she was watching a show and she was getting bothered by your show and I thought that shit was so fucking funny. <laughs> like I was like, did I wind up fucking her? No, you already did. You oh, hit, oh she was so in she, the audience. She, she didn't show, know about the show. She came to the show like kind of like that's my boo type shit. I'm like he's not your boo, and so <laughs> she was angry. It was a long time ago. She was angry in the audience watching a show, and a lot of the stuff you were saying applied to her. Like she was like a associate of mine. She wasn't a friend. 
but we just went to your show, and I remember that shit. That shit was so funny. I loved it. Well, during commercial, we would find who this is. She was not. I never, I never tell girls, especially before I got a little more popularity with this internet and everything that goes on. I would never tell them I'm a comedian. It's just I used to bring girls to my show, and then I sneak away for a second. Then they see me go on stage. And they used to always give me pussy like that. They'd be like, oh, you're the comedian. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's just right. how I used to do. Right. But as I've gotten older, as mm-hmm. I've gotten older and been blessed enough to talk to people who are intelligent, mm-hmm. and because and, and, uh, I listen to people when they talk, mm-hmm. I have I have basically put it all under, uh, put it in perspective. Let me tell you something. Crazy people are going to show you they crazy, and they're going to act like you crazy. Yeah, mm-hmm. you're right about that. That's so true. Do you believe in love, Corey? Of course. Have you been in love? Of course. In love. More than once? What is in love? I don't know that's what that what, means. That's a good question. What we is talk about that all the time. Yeah, I don't love. know what it is either. What Kinda, is that? I, th- I feel like in love, you can I, love someone I, I like, I love a lot of people that are friends. I'm sure you got love people that you're like, I care about them. I don't want them to die. I, I, I want them to eat and whatever. But then there's someone that, I think in love is when you feel like you just kind of can't live without that person and they're... You want them it's to like, be happy over yourself. Like you, you can't live without them, but you can still feel that I you mean, can push them down the stairs. I don't really understand that because I feel like I can live without anything. Love is love. I think that love you're talking about is trendy. Mm-hmm. Like people say, oh, I can't live without that person, and then they're getting fucked by somebody else later on. Damn. I'm just keeping it real. Mm-hmm. I, I don't, I, especially out here in Hollywood, none of these relationships last. Yeah. yeah. I don't even know why they call them relationships. Right. They should be like, this is what we're going to do for a while. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> but. What I'm saying is, of course I've been in love before, but I'm not finna let love lead the way. Right. I got to lead the way. Did and I didn't I didn't I didn't I didn't stop fucking with girls that I really didn't want to stop fucking with. Uh, but um the disrespect is something that I just cannot I can't let you talk to me like that. Right, Have right. women tried that with you a lot? Of course. I, I I got this girl who I had to cut off and I did not want to cut her off, but she had no self control when she got upset. She got um she got she she lost her man. Oh uh, and you you asking me am I married? Yes, I'm married. Well, I don't want to say it. I'm, damn, oh, nigga. I, I mean, I want to say that I'm like um I don't want to put you on blast if you talk about other girls. I don't have a wife. I met out here in Hollywood. So you have man. an open relationship with your wife? No, no, no. That ain't that ain't what we got. But <laughs> what me and my wife has, she knows who I am and I know who she is. That's my real friend. Mm-hmm. Um, Doesn't this so, shit this shit out here in the streets ain't nothing. My wife, we was, I, I, like I said, I'm a project nigga. We was walking down the street the other day, and we passed by the Tiffany store. And I went in there and bought her the biggest necklace in there. Just because I couldn't do shit like that when I was a young right, motherfucker. Mm-hmm. And because she holds shit down, she can get whatever she want from me. Does it bother her when she hears stories of you talking about other women? Oh, no. My wife don't even listen to the internet or none Damn. of this bullshit. Because let me tell you what it is. A lot of this shit is bad nutrition. What do you mean by that? Preach, preach. When you eat food, you know, they be like, oh, you got to eat nutritional food. But shit that you see and hear is nutrition also. Everything you ingest. Right. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. A lot of this shit shit is nothing. No. This will keep you in the mix of all of the bitches that ain't got nobody who got their back. If a woman goes off what she hears in the internet and all like this. This is all a show. I came to Hollywood to make money. Okay, but you just are you are saying out of your mouth that about fucking with other girls and you're saying you're married. So how is that's not like no fake shit. That's not no Hollywood shit. That's you talking on a radio show. Like that wouldn't bother her, is what I'm asking you. Why would it bother her? My my wife know when I walk out that door, hey, I'm finna go get it. We, so you guys we hustling out here. So you don't consider that an open relationship? No, nah, that that's what most people would try to um <laughs> Most people would try to analyze what I do and what me and my wife do, but mm-hmm. you would never be able to analyze it. My wife don't even like talking to bitches. My wife, <laughs> when bitches walk up to her, you could see her stand off and she's like, hello. Mm-hmm. So is it okay? And I love that about her. That's one of the reasons I, I, I would never want to break up with my wife because <laughs> she don't smile with bitches. I love that shit. Can't no bitch come feel her out. If you keep talking, she going to be like, can I help you? She gonna let you know what the from fuck the you want. Mm-hmm. I see, I see. Mm-hmm. What the fuck you want, bitch? Right. Why are you talking to me, bitch? Mm-hmm. Is she, so you still date? Did you Corey can... fuck you, bitch? <laughs> <laughs> the fuck is you in my face for? That's why she so you get can, whatever from me. So you can still fuck another bitch if you want to. She's not gonna trip. That, that's what you coming up no, with. No, I'm asking you. <laughs> it's, a, it's a question. That ain't what I said. I'm I said, you. out here, this is the game. All this shit is the game. 
When you leave your house, mm -hmm. it's a game. You got motherfuckers trying to get you, motherfuckers trying to knock you down, motherfuckers smiling with you. It's, it's, it don't stop. The enemies are outside the door like a motherfucker. When you come back in the house, that's your place of tranquility. But when we, when we out together, we expect bitches to be curious. When I say bitches, I mean bitches are normally the aggressive ones. Right. Men, we got a cold because niggas kill each other. Uh -huh. When it's disrespect, mm -hmm. motherfuckers okay. be ready to fight. Mm -hmm. But bitches, they, <laughs> hey, yeah, yeah, all that mm -hmm. shit. Nah, I, I could never have no weak bitch to smile with other bitches around me. Because ain't no telling what I did with that bitch. I tell my wife, any bitch speak to you, that bitch ain't shit. <laughs> Wait, Corey. That bitch ain't shit. Corey. I don't even know why the bitch talking to you. She trying to feel you out and oh see who God. you are. Okay. I'm just saying. How many, how many Basically, what he's saying is when he his wife understands when he leave the house, I'm going to bring home a steak. You just don't want to know how it's prepared. Got it. So, mm -hmm. okay. Not necessarily how it's prepared. I'm going to get this wok. what farm it came from. Ain't no telling what the fuck I'm going to do to get this wok. Well, you don't but know I'm how. Here to tell Listen, you. I, can, I, can hit the, I can hit the cow with a truck or I can stab him. I can shoot him. But at the end of the day, you're going to get... So, I mean, so is it like don't ask me any questions about it, or she just doesn't ask you questions? I don't think you would understand, sister. That's because why I'm asking. I'm, I'm trying to figure it out because like, it's fascinating to me. Everybody don't. Let, let me tell you something. In the Bible, the first stories talk about it, especially all you Christian women out there. Bitches destroy the world. <laughs> Oh, my God. You know what? It's the truth. Oh. If you're a church person and you know anything about the Bible, if you allow <laughs> bitches to be, they are going to destroy shit. Eve is the perfect example of what a woman will do if you allow her to do this. Now, like I said in the beginning, I don't like bullies. I don't like nobody who takes advantage of women. In fact, I had a friend. He used to always walk up to women and touch them when he meet them. I stopped being around him because of that. I'm like, look, dude, I don't like that shit. And he's like, fuck, is you telling me this month? I'm like, okay, but just don't be around me because you one of them. I think you're a predator. <laughs> <laughs> All right, back on Unstable Podcast, Mike Hill, Guy Tory, Claudia Jordan, Steve Wilson, and special guest Corey Holcomb in the house, uh, host of Love 5150, bro. Yeah. I love that show, Yo. bro. Seriously, oh, yeah, yeah, we yeah. just talking shit. Yeah, y'all be going <laughs> in on it. Well, how's that show doing now? It's doing real good. When I, when I look at how many views we have, I can't believe it. I be like, man, there's a lot of people who watch the show, but they don't want to admit they watch the show. Guilty, they guilty like pleasure. It's, right, it's something they shouldn't be watching. You know what I mean? I put it out there, like, who should we get for the show? And a lot of people, they want you to come on our show, so I, I appreciate you coming by there. And, you know, we got the history of the foxhole, and, you know, you had your, you know, you were a star on the foxhole. You definitely yeah. was. You were on Speedy's show, but you were far more... Started uh, relevant out, than him. Started out on Speedy <laughs> Show, and, well, and uh, yeah. you know, uh, eventually I got my own show, uh -huh. and it was it, it, it was cool. My man, um, uh, Marcus King, yeah, yeah. Jamie's manager, to, yeah, to manager. go ahead and uh -huh. give me a show. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, it, it wasn't easy getting the show because um, I, I felt like it was uh, opposition to me getting the show up there. Why, why oh. do you think who who was opposing that? I think it was I think it was Jamie um, because. The word competition, um, I feel like it 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 makes some people it brings out the worst in some people. Competition, facts. facts. Um, and it was a lot of people watching that show that um, I was doing the fifty one fifty show and Speedy show mm -hmm. because, in all fairness, Jamie was doing movies and shit. He didn't have time to do that shit all the time. Right. So we became like the main guys that were there every week, mm -hmm. and people got to know us, which is why I always take my hat off to everything um, that has to do with the foxhole because I was able to grow and get my notoriety on, um, you know, by being part of that. Mm -hmm. I'm not taking nothing away, but I did feel the element of competition making people not comfortable. Bitch-assness. Yeah. You felt it in the That's air. That's a way to say it. Yeah. I was trying to be nice. Yeah, it was bitch-assness in the air. But it was, it, was, it was people up there scared of competition, so... Yeah. Um, it, I... I it didn't work as smoothly as it should have worked. It took me too long to get a shirt. It took me too long to get a show. But I'm I'm never mad at none of them people up there because this is part of the game. Right. You're going to meet people that, check it out, some people might not even mean you good. But you, if you really the person you're supposed to be, you got to learn how to capitalize off that. Yeah. Ain't that the truth? Ain't that the truth? I wanted to, I wanted yeah. to be part of the Fox. Let me tell you something. About, first of all, about Jamie Fox, man, it's like <laughs> it was a, he's a hero of mine. You know what I mean? I like right. to see brothers who find a way, right, 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 to do big things. Right. And he had did big things. So when I saw him, 
in person for the first time, I really was like, damn, it's Jamie Foxx. Right. right. <laughs> I'm just saying, right. I felt like that competition, I, I'm smart. I pick up on, on stuff in people. And I was like, man, this competition is something that he's not comfortable so you, with. You feel like he was threatened? He felt threatened by you? As crazy as that sounded, it ain't nothing but little old me at that time. You know what I mean? But see, the thing about Corey Holcomb, if, if, I don't know if you can pet your own back. I'm funny. Yeah. Especially with this on air as we interact. Yeah. And it was speedy, all us in there. We was tripping out. That show was good. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, And, and Jamie Foxx, by him being a, a superstar, that puts pressure on the star. You know what I mean? But we had a big ass group of comedians, and the show flowed real strong, and it was the number one show on the Fox Hole. What was your relationship with Jamie off the air? Off I never the- had a relationship with him like that. I always show him respect and, and pay homage to him when I see him. You know what I mean? But I know I'm not your type of guy, dude. So what? I mean, but give me an example of what you you felt like you should have gotten the show sooner. What was the? Why do you feel like he felt threatened by you? Well, one day I said something about a show, and he kind of looked like, no, nah, woo, 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 and I never kept it going. It's probably something he might not even remember like that, but it here's a way to get to know who people are. You ask the people around somebody who is this guy. Mm-hmm. You remember Cam Newton got that bad press mm-hmm. about being a, a a womanizer or something like that when oh, yeah, he said, what the oh, yeah, 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 asking yeah. people about rap. <laughs> and the press was shitting all over him. I'm like, y'all don't know him. If you want to find out if he a woman does or whatever, you ask the women that's around him. Mm-hmm. That's how you find out who somebody is. So I'm never going to sit up here and talk bad on that man like that, but I will be bold enough to say I believe the competition, he didn't like that. So what it sounds like is that people around Jamie are the ones that are saying things about Jamie and they're bringing it back to you. I got no, no, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying, what I said to people around him, I say if you want to know how somebody is, you ask the people around Jamie that's around him who he is. If you want to know who Corey Holcomb is, you ask the people around Corey Holcomb who he is. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about the people that are around him enough to be like, oh, I've interacted with that dude enough. Right, 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 because right, I, right. Get a, I get a rap for a guy being a woman hater, which is... Further from, furthest from the truth. You right. I've seen saying? you at the New Edition concert with your family. I know what you do on stage and what you do in real life is, you know, different. But, I, but you do, say, life, some, you do actually, say some shit on stage, though, that'll make people believe it. I'm standoffish in real life because I, I just, I don't know. It's like I know you need the attention because it helps your popularity and it helps you make money. But it's awkward meeting strangers. Mm-hmm. People you don't know, I'm always yeah. But like, you just say up, stuff man? when you first meet people. You don't hope. Listen, one of the funniest things I've ever seen <laughs> is when we was on Sunset and a, a comic, comic that I know, Iron SJ, we was on, and he came up to you, and this is the funny shit I've ever seen. He's Iron S came up to Corey and said, man, that was some funny shit you did on stage, but I got a tagline for you. And you said, hold up, because you steal jokes. I don't want to hear shit. My mouth dropped. I was like, what? Oh, that was when I was straight from Chicago. I was like, what? I knew about Iron I was but like, I what? I, I met Arnez, and you know what I'm saying, from playing basketball. That's the thing about California. All the people you see on TV, if you live out here and yeah. you at the gym or yeah, you, you play ball, right? you're going to meet all these people. Uh, <laughs> right. But, yeah, you, I, that, but that I, blew, I wasn't that saying that to mind. be mean. I just was like, you do people jokes. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, you didn't. You said, I'm not going to take that joke from you because you steal jokes. You ain't saying like That's what I heard. Yeah, you ain't doing nice. I was, my mom dropped. Arnez it's was hilarious. Like, oh. You know what I, I think about rappers? I mean, comics is you guys are like rappers sometimes. You got crews. You might have a star, but you put your crew on like Kevin Hart got the uh, the, right. the Plastic Cup Boys, right? So he and puts his Chappelle crew on. And with uh, Donnell. And, and, yeah, and so he's got these crews, whatever mm-hmm. he tries to put on or whatever, but you also have these beefs with the other crews as well, right? So they're like comics. I hear God talking about it. I hear Steve talking about some of the comics that he doesn't like. I'm pretty sure there are certain guys that you don't get along with as well. I just stay away from them. Right. I, I really do. I don't go around. I'm a loner. He is. I'll be by myself all the time. I do not like that. You know what? Every time I've seen you, you've been by yourself. Yeah, I'm outside a loner. the improv. Yep. I'll be so happy to see, like, when we, if you notice, I'm always standing outside the club. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't like to go in the club because I feel like it's more drama to get into in the club. I right. like standing outside watching everybody come out. I will say, going back with a little bit with the foxhole, like that, we were perfectly teed off and ready. To be the biggest thing ever when it comes, we like before the Breakfast Club, there was a foxhole. Mm-hmm. We were the first ones that were so like. Oh, that shit was edgy. everywhere. You know what I mean? Before that, it was like the proper interviews, and like we were the ones that like kind of like 
we had Superhead on the show and Cutting we edge. exploited her. Like, like we were just raw. Like, I mean, y'all came right out when the internet show, got hot. Y'all came right we, out. We did that. And it's like, I feel like there was so much bullshit with the management and the behind the scenes bullshit <laughs> that fucked up what could have been, we could have really had a lock on this whole this radio. This will fuck everything up. Everybody want to get rich, but don't want the people on the air to get rich. Yeah, yeah. That happens mm-hmm. with Russell Simmons. Russell Simmons exploit everybody he, he's ever. Mm-hmm. Them people who work down there, that um, what is that thing? All, all Jeff Digital. Def, all Jeff Digital. All def- ain't none of them making no G. Mm. I remember VH. <laughs> ain't none of them making. Yep, it yep. ain't even. Uh, Jamie gave me and my girl a spinoff. Right, we did the quad. It was like a relationship show. Right, and we did Monday nights. And you came on the show, and we had a great show, great time. You came into the uh, the Congo room. That was when you was with your home girl. Right, we had a good show. Right, we did relationship talk. It wasn't male bashing. It was very honest. It was cool. <laughs> Anyways, um, VH1 came to us, and they wanted us to pitch a show to be a possible radio show on TV. So we went in. We pitched it. Within one hour of the meeting, they hit me back. They said, give us 13 episodes. They gave us a deal memo and everything. They wanted, wow. they wanted to give us money. I told the girls, the girls weren't getting paid anything. I was like, I, I told y'all, rock with me. I'm going to get y'all paid. I was so excited to get them all paid. I go to Marcus King, and I'm like, Marcus, VH1 wants us to shoot this show. They need us to shoot our show, our <laughs> actual show, in the studio for a, a demo a pilot. And he said, I just don't think now is the right time. Wow. And why don't you go through us? And I was like, but this is our opportunity. Like, the only, You want me to tell you something? This ain't nothing bad. But the only thing you did wrong, you told him. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean, sister? I needed permission to shoot in his uh, studio because it was in his office. I'll, you know what? Let me tell you something. They shut our you shit down. You have to get your own shit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. what the 5150 show was about. Yes. After being around You're that right. situation. You got your equipment and you went on I and went and bought thing. that equipment. I right. was like, this shit you ain't didn't. even that expensive. Why the fuck we doing that Break shit? Break out on your own. <laughs> you know I mean? guess $2,000, you can do your own show. You know what, Corey? I guess. <laughs> Nigga, I'm and, that, and, and that was me ba- being naive. Thinking, Back then, but think, now you right, know better. Thinking, okay, I gave you two years of free work, of labor, and, you know, sponsorship was coming in, and someone was making money, right? And it wasn't all the way going to everybody, and I thought... When the opportunity comes and I need you to support, you're going to have my back. I just I just thought too much, like, right. And now, years later, I get it. But at the time, I was, like, kind of, like, optimistic, thinking, like, oh, my God. You yeah, learned the game. I learned the game. Man, fuck, I'm saying, I'm going to go buy my own shit right now. <laughs> yeah, for real. No, seriously, we take, we're taking this show on the road. we buying our own equipment to take it. If we're not playing the game, if you wait the for these people to help And as the popularity build up, yeah. somebody might come to you with a deal or whatever right. like that, man. It's, it, you cannot You got three yep. comedians and, and, and Mike and host. Come on, man. You can't depend on nobody but yourself right. and the people who you feel like and you know who those people are. Don't act like you don't know who the people are. Mm-hmm. The people who you feel have enough morality about themselves yeah. to come in and do what's right about Listen, the whole situation. So going situation. back to the first thing, nobody's upset about anything that's happened to them in the past. I'm pretty sure you guys are going to give uh, Jamie and Katie Holmes a, a, a baby present. You know, I, 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 Get your they, hustle, Jamie. I hear they, I, from what I hear, they're expecting. <laughs> right, right, right. Um, Claudia, Claudia, got a com- any comment? Claudia? No. That's Scientology. I, I got banished from the group for saying that he was happy, so I, I don't even know that he's even with her. I don't even oh, know. Yeah. I don't think they're even together. I don't know. Oh, wow. <laughs> when TMZ <laughs> <laughs> I'm not invited to the cookouts anymore. I don't. I don't know what happened. Wow. I don't, I don't know what happened. You got cut out of the group. I don't know. I know that used to be your man, Jamie. We was mad. The homie. I yeah. remember one time he brought me and Johnny Mac in the studio, and he said, "You guys are the only ones I trusted." And I remember I defended him so many times with so many rumors and so many so many people try to like get to me or Johnny Mac, whatever, to get dirt on him, and I would never sell him out. Never, ever, 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 ever. So. You know, it, it 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 did hurt when we got to this point where we are now. When I first met Johnny Mac, we was for the fight. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> In front of the improv, we was really. For we what? was all we was. He little, he, he little asshole sometimes. But I like Johnny Mac yeah. a lot because yeah. actually. In conversations like this, Johnny Mac is funny. Yeah, he is. Johnny Mac is, yeah. <laughs> he's I, better at this than like on stage. I when feel like I he's first better. He's saying he's something. Hilarious. I was like, who is this motherfucker? Oh, Johnny Mac a comedian too. <laughs> He tried it a couple of times. Oh, okay. But he's yeah. a writer. He writes okay. on projects. He's, I know he works on the okay. Hollywood yeah. Husbands, whatever. Yeah. Kevin Hart show. Okay. okay. All right, well, we know we got to let you go, man. Guy's got to catch a flight. He got to yeah. uh, catch a red eye. Where, where you going, guy, first Rochester. Off? Cold-ass Ro- Rochester. Ooh. You really want to be 45 there. 45 minutes from Buffalo. Yeah, get that but before, yeah, get that money. <laughs> but before we let you go, man, we got to get you. You know, everybody's talking about Donald Trump and just uh, his administration, everything he's like. Uh, condoning pedophilia man, now Trump, and everything. Like, what, what are your overall thoughts on Donald Trump and what he's been like as a president? I, I, I am so glad Donald Trump was voted in, according to what they say, because 
they show who voted for him, and it's the same bitches talk about, oh, somebody touched me wrong. <laughs> Them the same bitches who voted Donald Trump <laughs> in. So this whole country is a big ass hypocrisy. Sexual th- sexual uh predator presidency. That's what I call it. Fifty three percent of white women, the same white women that are all hashtag me too, y'all voted for this person. I used to be friends with him. I definitely I I I distanced myself from him a long time ago. But the shit is it it's amazing that <sighs> they are publicly endorsing a known pedophile that was banned from a mall. You're banned from no, the mall. No, still you fucking... banned from a mall. I know. Yeah, not just banned like a long time ago. He and, can't go to the mall right now. And they even say the witnesses are credible. It's credible cases. But it proves, like, if you have power, you and can money. do what the fuck you want to do. And Whatever money. you want. And money. No, that's true. Money helps. Yeah, well, money, money is the power. Money that's is what the I meant power, to say, man. guys. Bro, you are a very funny guy. We love having you on the show. Thank you for being just thank you. Thank you, Corey, man. We appreciate yeah. you. Yeah. Glad you I'm glad I got your real number now. So thank you for coming through. I really appreciate yeah, you coming Yeah, Corey, through. I got like three different numbers for right. you, man. Right. What's going, you, what how is often going you on with that? nigga, you real. Hey, Corey didn't piss a lot of people off, man. I called three numbers for this By speaking the truth, and he had to change his number, man. No, no, no. He changed his number. I changed it because there are a lot of strangers that tell me I know them when they call me. Yeah. And after it started getting to the point where it's real bad, I just be like, I'm going to switch it up because my circle's so small anyway. But I, I, I'm good. glad you got in touch with me. Yeah, um, thank you. Claudia, you know what I'm saying? I, I want to come I, by your I, show again. People always ask me to come by. I'm like, And then someone said, he didn't want you to come on. He said, you travel. I'm like, whatever. I'll still come by your show. You can come on my show, Claudia. I, you, you know what I found out, though? Like, when you have a radio show, <laughs> Um, you have to have people sign certain shit to say, basically, yeah. if something go wrong in this oh. motherfucker, you can't come at me for it. <laughs> <laughs> but I found that out the hard yeah, way. Yeah, we going to have to start doing that. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I said that on purpose because you get people who come in here and they be on one, be them pop the pill, and you know uh, what I'm saying? Oh, we well, we ain't going bring, we ain't gonna bring that up, but yeah, you have some shit. Yeah, shit happens when people come on your show because envy is a motherfucker. Is there anything I, I like to give, we we like to give people, like, the platform. Is there something that you like to get off your chest that you want people to know about Corey Holcomb that we may not know that, I don't know. Black Jesus! If you had 30 seconds to so say something to the camera. Yeah, and promote where you're going to be this weekend, too. You, wherever on. you want to say. Oh, you, thank God I ain't working this weekend, but I will be in Baltimore next weekend. Oh, next whatever weekend in Baltimore. Is, Baltimore. Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Uh, yeah, but, Comedy Factory? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. who is Corey? I'm, I'm there the week after you, actually. Oh, that's Perfect. what's up. Yeah. That's what's up. I'll be in D.C. that week. That week. I'll, I'll probably come to the show. Oh, please yeah, come yeah, to the yeah. show. Watch I, want, I want you to see how it be packed out. Oh, it's I know. an audience for what I, I, I do. I've been to your shows before. I know I know you very well. Yeah. I know you're a big fan. To people who don't know who Corey Holcomb is, who's, Corey Holcomb is, excuse me, Sutter Wine, who's never seen your show before, how would you describe your show or who you are? Who are you? Honest. All you, all you couples on the verge of breaking up, you might as well let me finish that bullshit <laughs> off for you because you're not going to make it, all right? Here's his Twitter, <laughs> Facebook, and Instagram right here. If you want to see him on YouTube, it's all right here, Corey Holcomb. Give it up for Corey Thanks Holcomb. Thanks for having Thank me, brother. Brother. Oh, man. Appreciate on, that, man. Thanks for coming by. Thank oh, you. All right, that's another edition of the Unstable Podcast. Mike Hill. And we didn't give out any of our stuff, but all, all our social media stuff is right here. Right, right here, here at the bottom, yeah. All yeah. our social media. Really? Right. Keep on following. Keep Keep totally in a place to be. You got kicked out your mama's university. I'm out. Steve Wilson, who, uh, by the way, I found out Steve gets his uh, his back hair shaved by Carly in the shower <laughs> with a pink oh razor. Here's yes. the thing. We're in a new, new relationship, and we take showers together. We've only been together two years, so Y'all don't trust each other. Y'all don't trust each other. That's why. We, we don't. You don't trust. You, no one wants she to shaves look. my back with a pink razor. It is what it is. She <laughs> shaves his back with a pink razor. It is what it is. Mm. Why are you laughing, nigga? It is what it is, man. <laughs> Claudia Jordan. We live together, Final man. words. Uh, fuck Tinder. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh! Really, you off Tinder now? Oh my gosh! Really? You know, it's a guy that got the app. a woman that came up found dead after she went on a Tinder date. She she found a she, dangerous they, in like these three streets. weeks later. She they found her dead. So yeah, you gotta yeah, let's stay yeah. on Tinder. Well, I'm, I'm just going Tinder. to just go by recommendations. Like I will be hooked up with a, a Mike friend. Hill. You ain't got no friends with her. He does. Yes, yes. We'll, we'll take care of her. Don't All worry. Right, about we were you a good girl, man. We're gonna get you somebody. So you take care. I'm kind of like happy single though. Like Good. I see people, my, happy no, 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 yes, yes. My friends, their friends that are in relationships are going through it with some fuck shit that I, I don't have to. I, I'm like, I don't have to deal with that shit. Claudia, we love you. You know that we love you. <laughs> you ain't got no man because you got too many options. <laughs> no, no, that's not true. You got too many. I options. meet the guys that are not ready, that are fucked up. They were broken up with when they were 18. They're fucked up still to this day. Oh, uh, we talked about this. I'm still Corey. tripping over that picture though that you showed me. 
the wedding picture. I'm, Stop it. Yeah, I'm, I'm still Stop. checking out that. All right, that's going to do it for this edition of the uh, Unstable Podcast. Uh, enjoy your holidays. Be safe. We will see you again next week. Uh.